let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the day light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And so God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place. Let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw it was good. And then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let the lights in the dome of the sky to give upon light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. And so God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the sea and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of earth 
and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And so God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. God created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and every living thing that moves upon the earth. God see, said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and to be indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. So we see that the creation was good. Indeed, God saw that it was very good. And when God gave the humans, made in God's image, dominion over, the responsibility to keep it so was also given, and may it be so. About the beginning of things, among others, our own Reverend Jeff Dugan has taught how the biblical creation story is held by all Abrahamic Abrahamic peoples and the new universe story of science run nicely in parallel to each other. The part I love most about this is that from science we know all the hydrogen in our universe was created all at once at the beginning out of the void in the great flaring forth, the Big Bang the Genesis. What that means for us today is that all the water in our bodies is made of that 13.8 billion year old hydrogen from the beginning of time as we know it. And so we carry Genesis in us all, literally and figuratively we carry the original blessing of goodness. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Genesis. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air, also male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of the earth. For in seven days, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days, and forty nights. And every living thing that I have made, I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundred year of Noah's life, 
in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark, they and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued 40 days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth. The ark floated on the face of the waters. The end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground, but the dove found no place to set its foot and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and he took it, and he brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and did it, it did not return to him any more. In the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your son's wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his son's wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of covenant between me and the earth. God always shows up. God would keep his promise to Noah Noah built the ark for himself, his family, filled it with two of every living creature, shut the doors, and the waters came. I can imagine 
Noah may have had some of the same feelings of isolation, boredom, and anxiety that many of us are feeling in the midst of this pandemic. Just like us, he did not know how long the isolation would last or when the rainbow would come. God promised he would not abandon Noah, and I dare say he will not abandon us either. In our frustration, we might ask, why do these things happen? Some will ask, why does God let these things happen? And even some others claim that the pandemic is God's death angel purging us of sin. I don't know why these things happen, but I do not believe that my loving God willingly afflicts us with tragedies such as these. These things happen just because they do. The good news is that God always shows up. He is a suffering God who is here to go through these challenges with us. He shows up to give us his love and his power to face whatever we must. The other night I had a piece of dove chocolate. On the inside of the foil wrapper, there's always a quote. My quote was, after every storm, there is a rainbow, no matter how long it takes to show up. Noah didn't know how long it would take, but God honored the covenant and eventually the rainbow showed up. Ours will too. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have placed in the skies the sign of your covenant with all living things. Grant that we who are saved through water and the spirit may worthily offer you our sacrifice of thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in this wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Let the Israelites go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all of his army chariots and his chariot drivers and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh his chariots and his chariot drivers the angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them it came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. 
<clears throat> the Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Friends, as we are engaged in living together in this pandemic, there are a few things that I would like us to remember from this story. And the first is this that the Israelites went through this time together as a community. It would not have worked if they had straggled one by one, but instead they went as community through the trials that they were going through. I would remind you that in this passage, in the very beginning of it, in the book of Exodus, Moses says to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that God will accomplish. And so you and I are also called to not be afraid, to not panic, to know that this community sustains us, that we are called to stand firm, to take all the measures we need to take, frustrating as they may be, and that we can trust that indeed God will see us through. But there's one last line in here that I just love, and it's this. You have only to keep still. Now, I sort of laugh at that because most of us are not keeping still. We have our little complaints. I know I complain about my hair and Every now and then I complain about the food. All of this I keep to myself pretty much. And I wish that I could be out and among all of you. We human beings are want to complain. But in this occasion, knowing that we are safe, we are called to be still. And that reminds me of that great passage. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day. You once delivered by the power of your mighty arm, your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the first offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen.
the hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these dry bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will come flesh, cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come forth, from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. An author once wrote, Art is the passing of feelings from a human heart to another human heart. God's question to us is the same one he asks of Ezekiel. Do we believe he will breathe new life into our bones? As I take my morning walks, I become aware of how after a long winter's rest, Nature is coming to a new life. The forsythia is dressed in glowing yellow. The daffodils are smiling, happy to rise again. The willow trees are reaching high into the sky with their gratitude of renewed life. Other trees are showing promise of new buds. Cherry blossoms will soon show us their beautiful color. My all-time favorite is the Bradford pear tree. They put a smile on my face, and I rejoice that they are faithful to their call to blossom once again, and I say thank you. Yes, God himself has brought me to rejoice through risen life this spring. Spring forth with new life. Let us pray. Almighty God, who by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. 
Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My friends, this is the point in a traditional Easter vigil in the Episcopal faith, but perhaps in other Christian denominations as well, where things get a little Eastery, where the anticipation has been building and where lights come on and children dressed in seersucker carrying lilies that are twice as big as they are come down the aisles and the organ whirls and plays and bells ring and everything just feels really Eastery. Um, and the priest will bid the Easter proclamation and things get back to business as usual um, in the church. Many of us uh, don't like Lent. We don't like rest. We don't like quiet. Uh, I don't like quiet. Um, but I'm not very much feeling that back to business is normal. Um, so I'd like to share with you as um, I believe the best prayers are through song. Um, this hymn is called This Easter Celebration. And it's a lovely um, composer, a, a hymn word writer uh, named Carolyn Gillette. And she wrote the words to this hymn a few weeks ago and set it to the beautiful tune Aurelia by Samuel Sebastian Wesley. The, the church's one foundation is the text you probably know. Let us pray. This Easter celebration is not like ones we've known. We pray in isolation, we sing the hymns alone. We're distant from our neighbors, from worship leaders too. No flowers grace the chancel to set the festive mood. No choirs gather singing, no banners lead the way. O God of love and promise, where's joy this Easter day? With sanctuaries empty, may homes become the place. We ponder resurrection and celebrate your grace. Our joy won't come from worship that's in a crowded room. But from the news of women who saw the empty tomb, our joy comes from disciples who ran with haste to see, who heard that Christ is risen and then by grace believed. In all the grief and suffering, may we remember well Christ's suffered crucifixion and faced the powers of hell. Each Easter bears the promise, Christ rose that glorious day. Now nothing in creation can keep your love away. We thank you that on Easter your church is blessed to be. A scattered faithful body that's doing ministry. In homes and in the places of help and healing too, we live the Easter message by gladly serving you. So my friends, I can with great joy 
despite this time of grief and suffering, convey and reassure and promise that Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.